we now start the first module of chapter 6 where we plan to talk about bilinear forms bilinear means linear in both the variables we will see that bilinear maps on a vector space V would be a map from V cross V to the base field F and bilinear means it is separately linear that means of the two coordinates if we fix one then it is linear in the other. Now what we plan to study in bilinear forms is that it is a much more generalized structure than the inner product structure on a vector space V. We will first define bilinear forms and then we will define symmetric bilinear forms and the theorem that we have proved that real symmetric matrices are orthogonally diagonalizable will be used once again. Let F denote a field of characteristic other than 2 and V a vector space over F. When we say that characteristic is not 2, that means 1 and minus 1 are different. We will see that this will be needed when we talk about bilinear forms and symmetric bilinear forms. Definition, a bilinear form F is a map from V cross V to the base field F such that the following properties are satisfied. The first one says F of AX plus BX dash comma Y is equal to a f of x comma y plus b f of x dash comma y for every x x dash and y in v and a b scalars and the second one says f of x comma c y plus d y dash is equal to c f of x comma y plus d f of x comma y dash for every x y y dash in v and scalars c and d. In other words, f is bilinear if it is separately linear in each variable when the other one is kept fixed. This is a standard notation that we use f of x y is equal to inner product x comma y, but remember that this may not really satisfy all the conditions of an inner product, but we will see that inner products do fall into this category of bilinear maps. Definition, a bilinear form F is said to be symmetric if F of x y equal to F of y x and it is called skew symmetric if f of x y is equal to minus f of y x. So, here you can see that characteristic other than 2 plays a role because otherwise we will not have any distinction between symmetric and skew symmetric. Now, an example the usual inner product on R n is a symmetric bilinear form on R n. Another example, let us fix an n cross n matrix with entries from the field F. So, A belongs to M and F. Now, for x y in F n, define the bilinear form to be inner product x y is equal to x transposed A y. Now, you can see that this is indeed bilinear that means linear with respect to each variable and this is a bilinear form on Fn. 
Now, if f is the real field and if we take a to be the n cross n identity matrix, then this bilinear form is nothing but the usual inner product on f n. And if for example, a is this 2 cross 2 symmetric matrix given by 1 comma minus 1 in the first row and minus 1 comma 1 in the second row, then this bilinear form would look like f of x 1 x 2 comma y 1 y 2 is equal to x 1 x 2 times the matrix 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 times the column matrix y 1 y 2 and then what we obtain is x 1 y 1 minus x 2 y 1 minus x 1 y 2 plus x 2 y 2. A proposition, let A be an n cross n matrix over f, A i j denotes the i j th entry of A, then the bilinear form given by inner product x y is equal to x transpose a y is symmetric if and only if a is a symmetric matrix. So, symmetric bilinear forms are given by symmetric matrices if it is of the form x transpose a y. So, suppose that a is symmetric that means a transpose is equal to a. then y transposed a x is y transposed a x transposed and that is x transposed a transposed y and that is x transposed a y. Therefore, inner product x y is the same as inner product y x for every x y in f n showing that it is a symmetric bilinear form and conversely if we assume symmetry of the bilinear form that is if inner product x y is inner product y x for every x y in f n then inner product e i comma e j is equal to e i transposed a e j but it is an easy calculation which shows that this is nothing but the i j th entry of a that is a i j and inner product e j e i is nothing but a j i. Given that inner product x y is equal to inner product y x for every x y in f n we have a i j is equal to a j i for every i and j therefore, a is a symmetric matrix. Now, let us start with a bilinear form on a finite dimensional vector space V and let B denote a basis for V which is given by this set consisting of the vectors V1, V2 and so on up to Vn. Now, given x, y in V, we can write x as a linear combination of V i's given by summation x i V i i equal to 1 to n and y is equal to summation y i V i i equal to 1 to n such that x i's and y i's are scalars. Now, if we compute this inner product x comma y, then by the bilinearity we obtain inner product summation i equal to 1 to n x i v i comma summation j equal to 1 to n y j v j is equal to the summation over i and j both and x i y j inner product v i v j. If we identify x and y with the tuples x 1, x 2, x n and y 1, y 2, y n after we have chosen the basis B for V, then this expression of inner product x y can be written as x transposed a y. Therefore, this matrix A whose entries are x i j's is called the matrix of the bilinear form 
with respect to a chosen basis B consisting of the vectors V1, V2, Vn. And let us use the notations, this box F with respect to B or the inner product with respect to B to represent the matrix A associated with the bilinear form. The following theorem shows how matrices representing a bilinear form with respect to different bases are related. We have learned definitions of bilinear forms and also symmetric bilinear forms. Remember that the characteristic condition on the base field is really important. It should be other than 2. And then we learnt a very specific bilinear form given by inner product x y is equal to x transposed a y. And what is interesting is that if we start with a bilinear form, then with respect to a chosen basis that is of the form x transposed a y. So, in a sense this bilinear form x transpose a y is a characterization and more importantly the matrix A decides whether the bilinear form is symmetric or not. Now, we will see how different matrices with respect to different bases of bilinear forms are related. Theorem let A and A dash be matrices representing the bilinear form on V with respect to basis B and B dash. We write the basis B as the set consisting of V1, V2 and so on up to Vn and the basis B dash as the set consisting of W1, W2 and so on up to Wn. Then we claim that a dash is equal to q a q transpose for some matrix q in g l n f that means it is an n cross n invertible matrix. Proof if we write the basis as ordered tuples v1, v2, vn and w1, w2, wn of vn, then we can write this b as b dash times p, where p is in glnf and that is the basis change matrix. Now, let v and w be vectors in v and with respect to chosen basis B, suppose that X and Y are the ordered tuples representing V and W respectively. And similarly, let X dash and Y dash be ordered tuples representing V and W respectively and that is with respect to the other basis B dash. Then P being the basis change matrix, we can write x dash is equal to Px and y dash is equal to Py. Therefore, inner product V comma W is equal to x transpose A y with respect to the basis B and that is x dash transpose A dash times y dash with respect to the basis b dash, both being the same as inner product v comma w, we have that x transpose a y is equal to x dash transpose a dash y dash, but we know that x dash is given by p x and y dash is given by p y. Therefore, this expression becomes x transpose p transpose a dash p y. Therefore, the matrix p transpose a dash p 
is equal to A. And hence, if we take Q is equal to P transpose inverse, which is of course the same as P inverse transpose, then A dash is equal to Q A Q transposed and Q is in G L and F. Now, let F 1 and F 2 be two bilinear forms on V and let A be a scalar. Let us define these operations F 1 plus F 2 and A F 1 given by F 1 plus F 2 of X Y is F 1 X Y plus F 2 X Y and A F 1 of X Y is A F 1 X Y for X Y in V and it is clear that F 1 plus F 2 and A F 1 both are in fact bilinear forms on V. Let us use the notation B V to denote the collection of all bilinear forms on the vector space V. Then with respect to the addition and scalar multiplication defined above, the set B V is a vector space over F. That is easy to check and in fact, it is not difficult to prove that if V is a vector space of dimension n over F with an ordered basis B, then the map phi B from the collection of all bilinear forms B V to the set of all n cross n matrices over F that is M and F, where the definition of the map is phi B of F is equal to the matrix representation of the bilinear form F with respect to the basis B. Definition, a matrix A in M and R is called positive definite if x transpose A x is positive for all x non-zero in R n. Now, a theorem, a real symmetric matrix is positive definite if and only if determinant of A i is positive for all i equal to 1 to n, where A i is the upper left i cross i sub matrix of A. This is a very important theorem which uh, characterizes positive definite symmetric matrices and this is very useful when we try to understand the symmetric bilinear forms. Now, this theorem says that let A be in M and R then the following statements are equivalent. This inner product x y is equal to x transpose a y for x y in R n represents an inner product on R n and statement 2 says a is symmetric and positive definite. So, we have already seen that A symmetric bilinear form can be put in the form x transpose a y where a is symmetric and now when the base field is the field of real numbers and the vector space is R n, then we see that this bilinear form x transpose a y represents an inner product if we have symmetry and also the positive definite property. Proof, if x y is equal to x transpose a y represents an inner product on R n, then A is symmetric. because inner product has the symmetry over R and 
the inner product x x is x transpose a x and that should be positive for all x non zero in R n. Therefore, we have the positive definite property. Conversely, if A is symmetric and positive definite, then this bilinear form x y equal to x transpose a y satisfies all the conditions of an inner product on R n. Definition, a symmetric bilinear form on a finite dimensional real vector space V is called positive definite if V V in a product is positive for all non-zero vector V in the vector space V. And this is an interesting example of the so called Lorentz form, which is a bilinear form such that V V assumes both positive and negative values and such forms are called indefinite and the Lorentz form is one such which is given by this inner product x y is equal to x 1 y 1 plus x 2 y 2 plus x 3 y 3 minus c square x 4 y 4 where this capital X is given by this 4 tuple x 1 x 2 x 3 x 4 and capital Y is given by this 4 tuple y 1 y 2 y 3 y 4 and this is a typical example of an indefinite form on space time R 4. Here the coefficient c represents the speed of light and can be normalized to 1 and then the matrix of this Lorentz form with respect to the given basis becomes 1 1 1 minus 1. Now, our aim is to classify all symmetric bilinear forms on finite dimensional real vector spaces. But the main difficulty in this classification is created by the existence of non-zero vectors V such that this inner product V V is equal to 0. For example, in the Lorentz form defined above, this vector v given by 1, 0, 0, 1 is one such. If A is a real symmetric and cross n matrix, which is positive definite, then x transposed A y defines an inner product on R n. So, a symmetric bilinear form is an inner product if it is of the form x transposed a y with a being real symmetric positive definite matrix. That is what we have seen now. Now, what is to be careful about is that we have been using the words bilinear form and uh, inner product interchangeably, but that is only to take care of that notation. Indeed, it is not true that all the symmetric bilinear forms on R n define inner product. Positive definite condition is absolutely essential. Now, it is time that we try to classify them all on finite dimensional inner product spaces and we have seen the example of Lorentz form where we have some difficulty because of existence of non-zero vectors V and inner product V V is not always non-negative.